this is from Radio Maverick 24, who I believe has always been in our voice chat uh, conversations uh, multiple times. He says, what grade would you give um, Craig Council halfway through his first season with the uh-huh. Cubs? I like, these are there is our this is a question from the mailbag that I wrote on Friday for diehards. Yes. You asked them in our diehard discord. I and an, I've answered them on our site in a diehard article. So if you want access to all that stuff, obviously become a diehard, Yeah, become a diehard, go on the site, become a diehard, you get all the other perks, you know, 20% off events, all that other good stuff. You can find it out. All com slash diehard, I believe. Mm-hmm. So check it out. Uh, but so I wrote about this. I answered this question uh, on Friday and I like I can't give I can't give him less than a C to be fair because a lot of it's just guys that were supposed to be their top performers underperforming mm-hmm. whether you know uh, Dansby Swanson that does not look like even Dansby Swanson that he was last year which it wasn't like a superstar off- offensive player but a productive was, offensive player right a lot better than this yeah yeah like this is a lot of their guys and it's like they don't have it's just a lot of player underperformance the bullpen hasn't been great um, the starting pitching has been really good, but then, like, it, it, for me, it's just, like, I think giving him less than that, like, I I think giving him less than that, to me, is just, like, giving him more of the blame than he actually deserves. But that's, like, for, like we talked about, yeah. it's, like, it's for any manager, right? Like, managers get too much credit. Uh, or managers don't get enough credit when the team is doing really well, and they get too much of the blame when... Um, the teams are doing really bad. I think a lot of it is on if, if you're grading like the team, it's been pretty bad. If you're grading like if you want to grade Jed Hoyer, like if you, you want to blame the team, you want to blame Jed Hoyer for the construction of the team. You want to blame the owner for putting a budget and not just saying, hey, Jed, go spend as much money as you want and, and fill out the team. Like, I think I'm not saying that that's what he should have done, but like there's blame to go around. Plenty of blame to go around for why the season is, has gone the way it has. I don't think Craig Council is the issue. Uh, and so I, I, I just think I'm not giving him an A or anything close to that right. because the team hasn't been great. Uh, and, and that's part of it as well. But like C range seems like as far as how much blame he actually deserves for what's gone on, I think C, C range is like right about where it is. Well, know? and I would think, you know, if you think about this in terms of wins above replacement, how many games does a manager truly win you or lose you? I, there's been one game. I wish I could remember who the opponent was, and I wish I could remember the date, but there was one game, I want to say, in April that I feel like David Ross would have fumbled the bag <laughs> in Craig Council's right. bullpen decisions led me to believe that it was a master class of, yeah. of what he brings to the table. Yeah. and I it think- was, it, it, Maybe I was being delusional in that moment. Of course, I'm always delusional, but – because obviously how things of the season have played out. But there was, I wish, again, I wish I could remember the date and the game, but there was one game that right. I can think of. Because I think in any season, there's always going to be, there's a few that are like that where you can really say, I think the manager, the way he handled this game, his in-game decisions probably won them that game or vice versa. He goofed this up, you know, didn't use this guy here when he should have whatever and, and, and cost him a game. Right. But over the course of a season, how many games either way are we talking about? I don't think it's that many because ultimately a manager has to work with the roster that's constructed for them. And this is kind of playing off yeah. of what Ryan said. I think the real criticism is the way the ro- roster is constructed. Um, Craig Council isn't going up to bat. He's not taking the mound. Um, do I think that there are there are things he could do a little differently? I'd like to see him... Um, maybe with some of his lineup construction as far as who's batting where. I'd like to see some changes there. So for that reason, um, I'm in a similar boat as Ryan. Maybe I'm a little more generous. I'd, I'd go as high as like a B minus, C plus. I mean, it's not oh, terrible. They're going to start calling you Lil' Craig now. Is, yeah. yeah. Is, Fernando's you know, calling Ryan Lil' Craig right now okay, in the chat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, I know, and everybody wants us all to say F. I get yeah. it. Like every, That's what everybody wants us to say. But, I, you know, it's – that wouldn't be an honest answer. I don't yeah. think this is well. Evil Craig Wax Council is giving counsel a B, yeah, like C, yeah, but C, he's giving C Hoyer an F. <laughs> well, that's kind of like I'm, yeah. I don't think the roster construction is that great. There's only so much Craig Council can do about yeah. that. And right. like I'm looking at it, they're basically the record, real record. Remember last year we harped so much on they, their record was or just like expected record versus what it actually was was like 
eight games below what it was or whatever. They're basically exactly what their expected record is. So like they are, they, they are, are what they who are, they thought right? they were. Yeah, they, they are what they are right now. They're not <laughs> yeah. scoring. They're not just blowing games and like this team should be so much better. Like I think it should be better, but it's not like the stats and the expected win loss is saying that. Like they're basically exactly where they're at, uh, and the expected win loss record ranking, whatever you, whichever one you're using. So I'm like, if that's what they are, how like I just how, they're playing the the, the the players are playing that. Like yeah. Craig Council isn't playing for them. He's they're doing that the way the roster constructed is doing that. I'm like, I just can't That's where your problem is. That's my problem yeah. is I can't like yeah. say like that's Craig Council's fault. Like mm-hmm. people were using the expected win loss to like blame David Ross for last season. So if they're exactly where they're at, is it still the manager's fault that the team is the the season has kind of sunk the last two months? Sure. Yeah, I mean for me, I guess I just go C as well. It's like a CC plus or anything because like that. Th- here, here are my pros on Craig Council. I think he makes good lineups. I don't find myself sitting here complaining about the lineup. Considering the injuries that we – like with Talkman yeah. now and yeah. where they're at with the 40-man right now, which he doesn't make a decision on, uh, they, he's been putting out the same consistent lineup over the last like week and a half. And you know what? I look at it and I'm like – on paper, and you look at the back of these guys' baseball guards and what they've done in their career, I can't complain. He plays Bellinger in the three-hole every single day. Michael Bush, he moved him up in the lineup, finally. I've been asking for it. He, he's he been doing it consist- consistently. Um, Ian Happ bats fifth. Um, Swanson's in that, se- like, six, seven hole, you know? And then, you know, the bottom is the bottom. Like, what he's either going to play Miguel Meyer or Tomas uh, Nito, right? Or mm-hmm. before that was Jan Gomes. And then, you know, PCA hit. The defense is there. The base running is there, but the hitting hasn't got there. So you, you, if there's one complaint, I guess I wish he would just play PCA in the nine hole to give him some protection instead of him batting with um, Amaya behind him or Nito behind him. Yeah. And then in the leadoff role, like, for me, the offense was at its peak this year when Ian Happ was leading off. But that's, right? I think, my biggest issue is that right. – that but, like, yeah. he's been performing, though. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. And he's been driving in runs. It's the go-ahead homer on eight, in the eighth inning the other day. You he's know, been like, Ian Happ, uh, I was looking at, like, high leverage moments, which he's had 44 plate appearances so far this year. Uh, he's at, like, a 212 WRC+. plus. Like, he has been incredibly strong in those high leverage moments yeah. when he gets all the hate for Right. Him. So, I don't hate the lineups. I do think his bullpen management is good. Now, as far as deciding who to put out there for the ninth inning, again, not his fault. Would I have liked to see him be a little bit more aggressive with Luke Little and Porter Hodge earlier, especially when the bullpen was like, especially when Mark Leiter Jr. went on the injured list and uh, you know Ben Brown and, all, and Jordan Wicks? Yes, I would have liked to see him be a little bit more aggressive with them. And thankfully, he has this last week, and those two are the reasons that they won two games last week in terms of the bullpen not blowing the game. Right? Mm-hmm. I can't blame him for using Hector Neris in the ninth inning as much because who else was there to use? I think in terms of getting to the ninth inning with a lead, when they have a lead, more often than not, I'm not complaining about what he's doing there. If you want to, if you're complaining about it, you're probably looking at it in hindsight, like a lot of fans do. Right. right? So I think what's most disappointing to me, and this is why he's a C is that we were all sold this like Craig council effect like, he was going to add wins, like we were mm-hmm. talking about, to this, this that team. That the expected win loss wasn't yeah. going to be so crazy. And it's just not been that. Right. And I, But at the same time, like, I, I can't sit here and say that, but then complain about the fact that they didn't do more in the offseason of making this team a real, true playoff team, you know? And that's, I think, what each of yeah. us, the ultimate conclusion is, and I'm seeing, you know, some of the people in the chat, like, we're, we're all – kind of pointing at the same thing the problem with the team is is not necessarily Craig Council so much as it is the guy mm-hmm. that's constructing the roster right. Jed Hoyer so um Craig I, Craig Brendel in the chat dude like I've been bashing Jed Hoyer on this podcast for two months brother like I don't, I don't yeah. know what you want that's, from me man saying, like, I think you, you were like, bashing, we all, you were we bashing all Jed all off season for yeah. not making moves in like yeah. December yeah. or whatever it was like, I I don't I'm just trying not to repeat myself um but you know yeah. it, Again, the diehard question was, "What would we grade Craig Council?" Right. I think it, we're, yeah, we're we all were giving him a fair to that grade. Question. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. The, the C, C plus. I don't even, I don't even disagree with a B minus. Like maybe I'm, hey, I'm being too harsh on him a little bit, right? Yeah. By giving him a C versus whatever. It's, but yeah. it's, it's tough to gauge in the again, first season, halfway through. Yeah. To, yeah. to me, it's not his. It's just not his fault. 
This is not his fault. Like you want to blame the roster construction. You want to blame the roster for underperforming. Those are valid. Those are valid. I I just I can't sit here and say like the the reason this team stinks is because of Craig Council. And yeah. the reason this team I, just hasn't been good for the last two months is because of Craig Council. I can't say that. And I know you guys are the ones who are talking to him after the games and stuff. But he's always going to take the fall for whatever. He's never going to answer truthfully in, to the media. He just isn't. David Ross was the same way. He took the fall for so many things. He's never going to give you what you guys want to hear. I think, and that's part of just being the manager. I feel like so. Like if people are mad about what he's saying in the post game, like half the time it's like, if I were him, I wouldn't even know what to say either. Because it's, if I can sit on my couch or in this studio on the couch in, in this office and script. Every single game this dumb team plays, how can how can I blame him for basically saying the same thing in the post game every night? I, I just I don't know. Like the guys have to go out there and play better. I think the biggest thing outside of not bringing the most out of a lot of the young guys, I guess at least on the position player side, he has brought it. He he ha- we have got the most value out of the pitching side. Mm-hmm. We've seen so much growth from the pitching side this year, yeah. and that's the only thing that gives me any optimism for the future. But that hasn't happened, and the fact that, and this is a meatball thing, this is a fan thing, just just one time go out there and get thrown out when there's a bad umpire call or something. Yeah. Just yeah. like something. And I, I, that probably doesn't even do anything, but like just one time go out there and st- just show that you're sticking up for your guy. That, yeah. that's, that's, I think that's what I'm asking for. Right. So. And it, that kind of came up on Saturday. We we he was sort of asked that question. We t- some of us after Craig left, we were talking about like part of the problem is the players know the manager really well, better than we do, mm-hmm. and if they see him do something that is perceived as disingenuous, then he's he risks losing the clubhouse. Like so for Craig Council, I don't know. I have to go back and look at like how many times he's been tossed for a game and and what it has looked like when he's done it. But, you know, if we're looking for the – I'll go back to the Lou Pinella yeah, example. Yeah, he's not Lou Pinella, yeah. If you're looking for him to do that, like, well, the players are going to watch him do that and think, like, what are you doing? This isn't who you are. You're not being yourself. It's not like you ever got thrown out in Milwaukee for that right. kind of like, stuff. Right, like, I don't – you know, so yeah. I think that's it, – it's tough because we, we talked about this earlier in the show. You're looking for that kind of thing because the team is doing poorly and you want to feel like I see something – some fire with them. Mm-hmm. And when you don't th- – feel like you're seeing that happen it's really easy to look at it and say oh they just don't care yeah. um and i think that's a growing perception of craig council i don't think that's fair i don't think that's yeah, accurate i don't think it's that he doesn't care at all um i don't but, think i don't think it's that any of these guys don't care right i don't think that's fair to what they're doing at all mm-hmm. but at the same time i i do understand a fan perspective watching what they're watching and arriving at that it. conclusion yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. like uh, i said like, i just don't like i don't th- the the perception I can understand where, like, like he's saying, where fans coming from, but it's just not. It's not that Greg Council doesn't care. It's not that the players don't care. It's not even that Jed Hoyer doesn't care. We're just at where we're at right now because right. because of right. that. This, this is the way the season's gone. Right. Right. We all silly like the mayor. 